Hello guys, so in this video we will see what is relative source in WPF. A relative source is a markup extension. A markup extension is used to obtain a value that is not a specific XAML type. So what does that mean? Let's go to Visual Studio. I have this text box, you can see it from the visual. Now let's write the text property and then the curly braces binding. So you see binding, it's a markup extension. Static resource, you see this static resource, it's a markup extension. Dynamic resource, it's a markup extension. Let's take any one binding and then let's say write any arbitrary uh, property as of now, first name and let's assume this it is coming from an arbitrary class. So what is happening here? Now the text property of this text box is getting data from this first name and to achieve this, this markup extension is helping me. So markup extension helps to get the data from this property. Okay. So the examples of markup extensions are binding, static resource, dynamic resource, x column static, and so is the relative source. Okay. Now the most important question, in what scenario I will be using this relative source? Now to understand this, we need to understand what all various modes are there in relative source. The first mode is the self mode. There are four and uh, the self mode in self mode uh, I, I will use this mode when i want to bind the property of an object to the property of the same object so what does that mean let's uh, come again uh, to the visual studio now here i have this text box and uh, i have this uh, width and height property now i want to uh, make a scenario where my height should always be equal to its width if I'll say you, then uh, you will say that, okay, we can achieve this, like I can give it a name, like txt, my text box, and then I can use, I can just bind this uh, height to the width. How? I can just uh, use the binding, then uh, element name, then text, and then I can give the path, and then we will see width. You see, I achieved it. And the visual, it is very much clear. If I'll change the width to 100, then I can see. But in this case, we are always uh, obliged to give the name of the text box. Say if I want to change this to text1, then I have to change it in the binding area also. So it is always static. Okay. I don't want to uh, have in this way. I want to have this always dynamic. So how to achieve this then? Okay. Let's remove this all and let's save the relative source now in this case. So binding, then relative source, then relative source, self. And then you can give the path again save it again we achieved it let's change it to 200 you see here it is achieved now this is very powerful not only this we can also make use of converter say uh, say i will give you a scenario that my height should always be half of the width then how will you do so now in this related source point you can use the converter the converter can get this width and then return the half of the width okay now let's come back to the slide now the sec second mode is fine ancestor in this mode we will be binding the property of a given object to another property of its related parent so what does that mean let's come to the visual studio and then uh, let's uh, comment this okay and then uh, let's uncomment this i've already have a piece of code uh, to save time okay so in this uh, example i have three borders one uh, under another and then finally i have a text box what i want to do i want to bind the text of this text block to any one of the borders name as you can see all these three borders have given a name how to do so we can do so using relative source bind in system mode so text and then binding then relative source and again relative source and then uh, find ancestor and then ancestor type okay which kind of ancestor i want to find i want to find uh, border and then you can give the ancestor level and let's say two i'm not finished yet i need to give the path also the property i want to bind the name property so i want to bind the name to the text of any one of the ancestor parent so as of now i have given the level 2 so that's why I'm, i can see grand 
parent border which is of second border it will kind of count from here one two and then three you can play it around quickly let's give three this is a great grandparent border and you give your one you can see a parent border okay now let's jump on to the third mode which is templated parent so okay so i want to use this in a scenario where i want to bind a property on the templated parent okay so now let's see this in action in visual studio for this uh, again i have a piece of code let me comment the previous one and then uh, let's look into the templated parent mode let's uh, uncomment it so here i have a button and then i have used a control template of the button with control template i can change how a control looks like the visual uh, look of the control so i have uh, changed uh, control from normal to uh, ellipse i have this fill property now if i'll give the background to say black then you see it is not working why because i have already overridden it with a local property fill but i want to achieve this i want to bind this background to this fill property i want to control the background from the button itself i can achieve this using relative source and template parent okay so let's achieve it binding then uh, relative source and relative source and then templated uh, parent and then again you can give the path what path i want to use the background you see black you can play it around red and then you see that now i have bounded this background to fill okay now let's go to the last mode previous data now this is very ambiguous one and uh, it is a uh, less used mode and this is used in a scenario where I want to bind the previous data item from a item collection. Let's see this in action again. For this, uh, I have done some prerequisite. Okay, so I have this uh, item class which has a data property. I have created a list. I have added three lists here. Three items in the list: 100, 130, and 150. And then I have set the data context to this collection. Okay. Now let me comment the old example and then come to the next one. And this new example, let me uncomment this. I have this list box and I have bound the item source with the collection itself, whatever is the data context I want to have in the item source. Then I have, I have changed how our items should be displayed. By default, items in an item uh, list box just display the uh, vertically I change it to horizontal and then I just uh, wrote a data template how my data will be represented onto the screen so I've used here here it is very important to notice that I've used text box and level now the text box is bound with the data normal data but the level is bound with the previous data using relative source I've used the mode previous data now let's see this uh, in action and then you will understand it by default okay okay so yeah it is coming i guess it's a bit slow at my end it seems okay so now i have this three item if you can see the text box is bound with the actual data 100 130 and 150 and the label is the downward uh, control 100 and 130 100 from this previous data then 130 from this data in the first one there was no previous data that's why it is empty kept empty so it is used to bind with the previous data from a collection okay let's come back to the slide so with this we are finished with all the modes and we are done